Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. We're here with Bretonia, going to be taking on the Tomb Kings. This is another game from the Flash tournament from the other day between myself and the Gabo King. So we've got, uh, yeah, Bretonia against Tomb Kings. Let's go to the army compositions. So, King Lou and Leon Kerr here. He's pretty solid in this matchup. There is an argument to be made for the Fan Chantress, but uh, I personally like Lewin quite a bit. He's got the regeneration, the Sword of Corone for the negative armor and melee defense. Lion Shield gives him missile and magic resistance, which is going to be useful against things like your Shopti Great Bows, uh, Spirit Leech from Arcan, and so on. We've also got Sandy Ground, and of course, the Ladies Champion, giving him that uh, sweet, sweet regeneration. Also has physical resistance from the Blessing of the Lady, and yeah. Good, good stuff. For the rest of the army here, you can see we've gotten relatively cheap with the peasant line. We've got some spearmen at arms with shields, single peasant mob, two units of fire arrows to help snipe out the Tomb King Lord. And we've got four units of Grail Knights, so invested <clears throat> very heavily in the elite tier heavy cavalry. We've got two supporting the flanks and two supporting the rear with a Lore of Life caster. Let's go ahead and take a look at Gobbo King's army here as we kick things into full motion. We'll have Arcan the Black with Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna. He's got, uh, let's see here, Lieber Mortis uh, for the uh, physical resistance, of course, Staff of Nagash and Tomb Blade of Arcan. No big surprise there for the area of effect healing. He's also got two Shop to Great Bows, the Sphinx of Uzsek. Uh, let's see, front line is a mix of Tomb Guard. He's also got the Kepper Guard, interesting. One Skeleton Warrior there. Uh, a couple of skeleton warriors and skeleton spears supporting the rear with a single tomb guard with halberd and that's pretty much it so yeah very fun stuff let's see uh, let's see how things unfold here first things first we're going to get moving up uh, <laughs> get moving up with lewin try and dodge out some of these shots here you can see these shop to great those are going to be firing in and i immediately dodge away the further away i am the easier it is going to be for me to dodge these shots but gabo king seeing my shenanigans here is not going to continue to fire very wisely saving his ammunition there for these grail knights which are going to be the main priority target for gabo king uh, these guys can do a ton of damage to all his construct units with their anti-large elite tier charge bonus they've got physical resistance not the best armor in the world it'll only 90 they could Honestly, could probably stand to get an armor buffed up to like 100 or so, but uh, they do have the bonus for large and just overall a very strong unit. Lewin's flying over, just doing a little bit of scouting, checking for sepulchral stalkers or shenanigans hidden in the woods right here, so just trying to gain some visibility here while the peasant mob moves up. And yeah, trying to keep the Grail Knights as well out of range as possible, but you can see Gobble King coming forward here and getting in range and taking down immediately three of those Grail Knights in a single volley, so that's some really great value from those Ushabti Great Bows. The other shot's completely missing, though, uh, but he is able to make some solid contact there, and man, those single shots just eliminate the, units of, or the unit model of the Grail Knights, and it does a ton of damage there, so some really nice value. Um, yeah, if in the mainline infantry engagement, I mean, obviously the Tomb King's infantry is going to be superior uh, to the peasant infantry here. But uh, hopefully we can use these knights effectively to help win win the charge. You can see coming in with the lance formation, just going to bro charge straight up the center here. Just raffle stop these uh, Kepper Guard. Uh, my, uh, my opponent does drop the Libra Mortis, but of course that's not going to help against any of the Grail tier units. They have magic attacks. That being said, this is honestly a very bad mistake by me. I just basically lost a whole unit of Grail Knights for free, just letting them get shot by Shopti Great Bows. Arcan has taken some damage from the Fire Arrows. We've been just trying to focus on him. And here, Gobbo King's going to overextend with this Sphinx a little bit here. So we're going to immediately uh, drop Lewin down and uh, use these... Uh, Grail Knights here, I say immediately. It's going to take me just a moment to react, but we're going to use them to collapse here. Uh, Gobble King is going to be dropping a Fate of Buna on these Grail Knights. A very good play there. Um, but yeah, you can see that the, the Sphinx is surrounded at this point. It's getting attacked by uh, Lewin, all the Grail Knights, and, uh, and so on. These Grail Knights here were caught up a little bit with some spears. These are actually the Regiment of Renown uh, Scorpion Legion, who I've been playing around with a little bit recently and they're actually a very good unit for the cost uh, they have the poison they have solid combat stats all around great melee defense really nice unit actually i'm not too big honestly on the kind of 
uh, fodder unit regiment of renown with poison attacks. But these guys are actually pretty solid overall. You can see the Sphinx is still caught up in all these Grailites here, just unable to move, and is going to be crumbling and taken down. Likewise, Arkan himself is taking a little bit of damage here, going to come in and try and use the Tomb Blade to heal, and again, dropping that uh, Liber Mortis, but... Uh, the, the magic attacks of the Grail Knights will uh, just completely circumvent that entirely. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, this Sphinx of Usak is going to be going down relatively shortly. The Tomb Blade's basically all that's keeping it alive at this point. But these Ushabti Graybills are still relatively healthy. I mean, they haven't taken any damage at all, in fact. They're still able to fire in with impunity, so that's pretty rough there. But uh, yeah, overall... We're doing pretty well so far. The Sphinx did just go down, so uh, that's going to be freeing my Grail Knights up to uh, focus on more high-value targets. Another Fate of Buna going down, though, and uh, Fate of Buna is honestly one spell that I think should be nerfed just for what it does. I mean, it's already been nerfed quite a bit over the patches, but I still think for a spell that essentially has zero risk, you shouldn't be able to delete you know, a, a high-tier unit of cavalry. In fact, I would go so far as to say reduce the damage number one of fate of buna so because it's no risk it shouldn't do that much damage at the end of the day i honestly wouldn't mind at all if fate of buna was worthless for a patch or two it's because it's always 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 been the go-to spell for lore of death and it just massacres elite tier cavalry and infantry i honestly just think they needed to reduce the overall damage of output of it just because again it's a riskless spell the only the only risk you're investing is the winds of magic cost which is a fraction of the cost of your potentially cheap spellcaster now some spellcasters are more expensive obviously arcan with all his kit here is going to be pretty expensive but overall it's just it's such good value for what you're getting and it's honestly a little bit overpowered still i would say um, and, and boring more than anything. I mean, it's a spell you just, when there's so many other cool spells in the game with these awesome looking effects and super flashy animations, and yet most people bring a spell that literally just has a purple light shine on you and kills you. <laughs> like, it's just boring. Um, when, especially when you have so many other cool spells in the game and synergies and stuff like that. To have that be the most competitive choice is just this boring flat damage spell. I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I would definitely say that they could change that, and I wouldn't bat an eye at all. But uh, anyway, in terms of the, the replay here, you can see things are turning against me a little bit. Um, the uh, the Grail Knights just don't have the staying power. The pe peasants weren't, a weren't able to hold up the anvil long enough, and we weren't able to get on these Ushabti Great Bows fast enough that they were able to take out most units of Grail Knights. Luin himself is still relatively healthy. We've got some tattered... Uh, forces around. Arcan has taken quite a bit of damage, but at this point he's going to be free to ride around and uh, cycle charge peasants and uh, just recharge his tomb blade and uh, just continue to heal up the constructs that are left, which are mostly these Ushabti. I just really don't have the stopping power at this point to take him down. You can see the pounds power starting to turn against me here. We're going to try and give it our all here and see if we can bring things back, but at this point things are looking pretty grim. We'll see if we're, we'll be able to pull it back here. I do catch Arcan, and if I'm able to goon Arcan and finish off that healing and the magic, then maybe we can cycle charge things to death with the Grail Knights and Lewin, but it's going to be pretty tough, especially with these Ushabti Great Bows still having so much ammo they can fire in with relative impunity here on Lewin. We are using these regrouped fire arrows just to focus on... Uh, Arcan, of course, since he's weak to fire damage. Uh, it should be okay. That being said, at the end of the day, these fire arrows don't have the best AP values, so it's tough to say actually how much damage it will be doing. But uh, Lewin's just kind of chilling here, trying to regenerate a little bit. We came in for a last desperate charge with these Grail Knights, but unfortunately, of course, Tomb King's units don't rout. They just crumble, so we didn't actually finish that unit off and ended up taking way more damage than it was worth. So we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit here as I kind of... Uh, do a little bit of fancy maneuvering here. Eventually, I just dive in Lewin. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to win this. Let's go ahead and have Lewin go in for one last glorious charge rather than just concede defeat uh, for you all. So, yeah, I mean, we are almost able to get in here. We actually do a, quite a bit of damage to this unit of Ushabti Great Bows. And if I had been able to do this, you guys saw how much even these incredibly tattered units of Grail Knights were able to do there. If I had been able to get one or two charges, solid open charges with my Grail Knights at full strength against these Ushabti Great Bows, then maybe the battle would have gone differently. Then again, it's tough to say. Gabo did definitely a mistake, make a mistake by overextending with his Sphinx there and allowed me kind of to catch it and finish it off. So that in and of itself was definitely a, fa a favor for me, but I definitely 
could have microed my Grail Knights better, particularly the one over on this side that just kind of got shot up for free. That was really, really bad at the end of the day. I could have used those Grail Knights in this late game situation to finish off these Ushabti Great Bows. You can see we're actually, <laughs> despite everything, did a ton of damage to this one unit and just about finished it off, but we just don't have the stopping power to finish off the second unit here. We're going to be bringing out the Damsel and going in for the last true glorious charge, trying to goon out Arcan, at least to just to get some pride back. But at this point, Lewin's leadership is so low, his army's gone, he's very, very wounded. He's going to be, uh, unfortunately, retreating from the battlefield. So he's going to be a victory for Gabo King today, Tomb Kings over Bretonia. And uh, I definitely think that the Tomb Kings currently are a Tier 1 faction. Um, the Tomb Blade of Arcan healing constructs just makes them so strong. Ushabti Great Bows are a great unit. They really are poor in the cavalry phase, but that ends up not being the biggest issue at the end of the day, just because they have so many good tools. But uh, yeah, again, very well played to Gabo King, who was trolling me throughout this tournament by uh, just copying my name there. So very fun stuff. If we take a look at the army breakdown, you can see the Sphinx only got 24 kills, and this is a huge waste for Gabo King. Um, but at the end of the day, the Ushabti Great Bows really pulled their weight there. 35 and 20 kills, most of those coming against Grail Knights. Kepper Guard, not surprisingly, cleaning house in the center, just clocking all the peasants, 122. These Tomb Guard, 92 as well, super solid. Uh, for myself some of the grail knights performed you can see the two on the on the wings didn't though the 126 and 128 of these two though and some xp chevrons to go around so uh, the peasants though definitely just wilted under that uh, heavy infantry pressure from the tomb kings and overall it was pretty rough if we'd been able to get like i said in a position with these two flank units of grail knights to get on to uh gabo's ushabti great bows then we could have maybe won an advantage there and maybe pulled it out in the end. It's tough to say. But uh, very well played to Gabo. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like this kind of content, feel free to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you next time.